Good morning and welcome this Sunday. Um, you are welcome here at the storehouse. We are online, live on Facebook, live on YouTube, and you can join us on both those platforms here this morning. But you are, we are so pleased that you are here with us this morning, whether you are normally a regular attendee of the storehouse or whether you're just joining us online. Um, as we have been online over the last few weeks or for the first time this morning, we warmly welcome you um, to be with us and enjoy our service together this morning. We had a wonderful time last week wishing Mark a happy birthday and so he's had his first week of being 35 and um, we haven't heard the end of it. And then this week we've enjoyed some great time together. So we had a great night of prayer on Monday and then we continued to pray with churches from around the town for 2020 prayer. And then we had such a fun evening on Thursday um, doing our quiz night where Alan and Denise ran away with uh, their scores and um, won that quiz night. So well done to you. Um, but it prizes was prizes in the post, Denise. <laughs> Although apparently they're still waiting for their last prize from the Fellowship Mingle. So, um, but we promise prizes will make it to you. Um, it's been difficult times, but they will make their way to you. Um, so we're so pleased to have you here with us um, at the storehouse. And um, none of our things say it, but um, at the storehouse, our motto is living. Um, building on the word living in the spirit and uh, it's been our motto for a very long time now and so even if maybe you visited our church I know some of you that have been watching um, that maybe know a few uh, members of our church that have been with us for a while um, you will possibly remember that motto being um, the motto of our church a long time ago but we still very much believe it that we are building on the word of God and um, living in the spirit. And we are here um, celebrating this period of time on Thursday. It was Ascension Day and we're remembering that time now where the um, disciples were in that upper room waiting for the gift of the Holy Spirit to be empowered to go, for the church to be birthed. And here we are, we are the church and we are alive and we are here live on Facebook, live on YouTube and uh, our doors may be shut like we uh, talked about last week, but the church is alive. And we've got some fantastic things lined up this week again for you. Um, but first, because we are alive and we are kicking, uh, we want to do our fellowship mingle that we missed doing last week because we we're too busy wishing Mark happy birthday. Um, so we're going to quickly do our fellowship mingle. I've been talking for a while to allow you all to jump on and join us. And our fellowship mingle works like this normally on our Sunday mornings together in our building um, we take time out to um, say hello to one another to bless one another um, and we really cherish that time um, that we get to fellowship together and we're missing that time so this is your opportunity to remember in spirit or remember physically if they're watching online um, uh, the comments below you can write um, hello to a single person that's the only rule you can only say hello to a single person at a time and then we will give a prize to whoever gets as many hellos to different people and we encourage you to say hello to the older generation of our church the younger generation of our church it doesn't matter if they're watching or not we think there's power in just remembering people in spirit and so uh, we encourage you to remember everyone and um, the screen has gone off but it's back there now and um, so it's telling me it's ready to go um, so if you're ready, get your fingers ready to type on that tablet, on that keyboard, wherever you're going. And it's one and a half minutes, fellowship mingle. Ready, steady, go. There we go. I've got to remember to stop it on time. We're not very good at doing that. Um, we've stopped it late um, and then we stopped it early. Stopped it early. <clears throat> but remember to say hello to um, maybe people that have been on your mind or on your heart um, this week particularly. Um, so remember to say hello to whoever you want. Maybe um, 
some of your friends are signing on and logging on and looking at what's going on. They um, will do if you like and share. So remember please like to and like share and video. share your video and then your friends will jump on. I know some of my friends have linked in a couple of times and so it's an opportunity to say hello, hello to them. Um, it's an opportunity to say hello to your family maybe that you haven't seen. Maybe people that often visit us when they're on holiday down this way and um, they have logged on as well um, and maybe other Welsh ministers that have their meetings in the evening. We've known a few of them have logged on hello, recently. Glenn. And um, so keep saying hello. So hello Pepper, hello Denise, hello David, hello Karen, hello Kezia if you're watching, hello um, Ruben, hello Joel. <laughs> hello Mark, hello Lydia. <laughs> Hello Pete. Hello Maureen. Hello George. Hello Colin. Hello Christine. Hello Billy. Ready, steady. Oh, 86 milliseconds. Milliseconds over. Fantastic. Okay, I hope you had a bit of fun there. Got to, didn't get too carried away. Um, but it's just a bit of fun um, to have together because it's good to have fun in the house of God as well even though we're not in the house of God, the virtual house of God. Um, and so within our house, um, there are so many things going on. Um, I had the opportunity this week to go into the church building and I haven't been in the church building for the last nine weeks. Um, and so I had the opportunity just to quickly pop in and see what's going on there. And it doesn't look like our church, how we remember it, remember it. But there's some great stuff going on in our church. So let's continue to keep the Dorchester Community Kitchen in our prayer um, this week as they continue to do some amazing work to support the people that are struggling within our community. Um, and then we go on to our church programme this week. And that starts with Monday night, our prayer our prayer. Meeting. meeting. I was going to say prayer group. Our prayer meeting. And um, that's at 7.30 here on Facebook Live. You will catch that on our page on the Storehouse Church Dorchester page. And um, if you've got any prayer requests you would like um, to bring to that prayer meeting before we go live, because you don't want to um, point it in the comments, Phil will put it down below here. And it's prayer dot the storehouse at gmail.com got it right prayer dot the storehouse at gmail.com so if you've got a prayer request or something that's just weighing heavy on your heart and you would like um, us to bring it in prayer then you can do that um, and email that across if you've got something that maybe you don't want us to pray about um, publicly on Facebook live in the prayer meeting that email is also there um, for you to email in and make us aware of stuff that's going on that you'd like us to pray into as a leadership or as a prayer team we have a devoted prayer team in our church that love to pray and um, they will um, take your prayer request and pray on your behalf and stand with you in prayer um, so it doesn't always have to go publicly in the um, prayer meeting. So um, then this week we are back to normal. We're going to have our Wednesday night um, home group and Thursday night home group and Rob or Alan will let you know how they're um, going but I assume they will continue as they've already continued so Rob's home group will be on messenger on Wednesday night and Alan's will be on zoom on Thursday night so join them I really encourage you to keep carrying on I know all the weeks are merging into one all the days are merging into one but try to make time um, to log into them and join um, your brothers and sisters to dive into the Bible a bit deeper. And then on Sunday, we will be back here again. And um, we would love to see you here again next Sunday because it is Pentecost Sunday. It's a great Sunday of the year and we love it. And um, we're disappointed we can't be together um, to celebrate the moving of the Holy Spirit, the time when the disciples were empowered by the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. But we will do our best next Sunday um, to celebrate together in a different way. 
but we are going to make it a great day day of Pentecost um, and that's exciting um, after this Sunday morning meeting and next Sunday we will continue with our coffee and tea fellowship um, on zoom hopefully we don't crash the internet like and we did last week this week we are so sorry for what happened last week it was out of our control completely so if anyone was getting stressed because they thought it was them not being able to work um, the systems it was completely not you it was completely not us it was the bigger system um, of the server of the program I don't understand it all but it wasn't us and hopefully it will work again this week I think that's it. We're going to come to some time of worship. So let's just gather our thoughts now and um, come into prayer as we come into worship. Father God, we thank you for who you are. God, we thank you that you are still a great God, that you are still moving among us. Lord, we're seeing you move in people's lives in the most desperate of times. But Lord, we thank you that you are working in our midst. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are among us and you are working among us, you are empowering us. And Spirit of God, we ask that you would be among us now as we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name, Amen. i 
highest of heights to the depths of the sea. Creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring. Every creature unique in the song that it sings, all exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable. You place the stars in the sky. And Told every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gives souls to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing for this time we've been able to come and worship you Lord we put you in your rightful place Lord you are the centre of it all you're the reason we've come to worship you this morning the reason we've come to log on to a service to put it on a smart screen to put it on Lord to engage with you we come to meet with you and worship you King Jesus and we thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us. We thank you for the love that you showed. We thank you for the mercy that you gave us. And Lord, we remember, Lord, that sacrifice that you made. We remember your body being broken for us and your blood shed on the cross. Lord, as we come before you and we take the emblems together, Lord, we thank you, Lord, that even though we're not in the same room but we're connected by your spirit we're connected by meeting and gathering together that we can come and have fellowship and come and have communion together and lord we know that you're with us we know that your spirit is hovering amongst us and moving in us lord would you touch our lives afresh Lord, would you work on our hearts as we come and we have communion before you Lord, you tell, us, you tell us in your word, Lord, that we're to examine our hearts before we take communion. Lord, would you examine our hearts, help us to examine our lives, Lord, that we are right before you. In Jesus' name.
Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body, Lord, that was broken for us. Precious Jesus, we honour you. Lord, we thank you for your blood, Lord, that washes us clean, for love that ran red for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. hope you have enjoyed that time of worship and communion that we've had together just want to come around God's word again now as I continue in my series in the book of James James 2 12 to 13 we're going to read today the title of my message is no favorites just show mercy part four so continuing in my series on the book of James found in the New Testament um, just want to pray before I do. Pray that God would open up our hearts. Holy Spirit would speak to us um, during this time. So Lord, we do pray. Lord, as we come around your word again, Lord, speak to our hearts. Speak to our lives. Open up our hearts and our ears to hear what you have to say. Lord, don't let us just be hearers, Lord, but let us be hearers and doers of your word, we pray. Shape us, mould us for your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Speak and act as those who are going to be judged by the law that gives freedom. How we speak and act is vitally important in our Christian life and our walk of obedience to Jesus as our Lord. The way we speak, the way we communicate, the way we um, share our thoughts and our feelings, the way we act, the way that people look at our lives and say, oh, that's not right. Do you know, as Christians, we need to live for God. The Bible says that we need to be holy for God is holy. And it's not that we float around on a cloud that just hovers above the earth because we are oh, holy. It's not about that. But our lifestyles, our actions, our thoughts, our words should reflect our saviour. There shouldn't be um, questions of, oh, I thought that guy was a Christian. I thought she was a Christian, I thought she goes to church. Why does she act like that? Why does he speak like that? That should never be the case when it comes to us as believers living for Jesus. When people see us and our lives, they should see Jesus. We should be reflecting his glory in our lives. And I'm not saying we, we are perfect all the time because we're not. There's times when we make mistakes. There's times when we're, we're tired and we're ratty and we're grumpy and we get upset. But on the whole, our lifestyle, our actions, our words should reflect our saviour. They should reflect the, the, the Lord who laid down his life for us and called us now to live our lives for him. We need to live holy for him. We need to act righteously for him. Not that we're self-righteous, but our words and our actions live up for him. How we speak is vitally important in our Christian faith and walk of obedience for our Lord. The second point, I just want to pull out of this incredible scripture, a couple of verses. Speaking at as those who are going to be judged. 
Matthew 16 verse 27 says this. These are the words of Jesus speaking. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Romans 14, 10 to 12 says, You then, why do you judge your brother or sister? Or why do you treat them with contempt? For we, for we will all stand before God's judgment seat. It is written, As surely as I live, says the Lord, every knee will bow before me, every tongue will acknowledge God. So then each of us will give an account of ourselves to God. We're going to give an account before God. We're going to have to give an account of our lives before him. We're all going to have to come to that point before him. The first point I made about our, our words and our actions line up with that second point. How we live for him. What are we going to do for him? How we come before him. Who are going to be judged. The way that we live. The way that we serve. The way that we do things. God's going to say, you need to give me an account for that. The Bible says that he's going to um, test our works on earth with fire. He's going to burn up anything that's not of him and everything that's of him is going to be left. What are we doing? You know, my dad um, brought me um, a present for my birthday. Um, which fits in beautifully with my new office that I've been decorated that's been decorated for me, and it's a, a canvas of a Banksy picture, and it says, "What we do here on earth lasts for eternity." It's right. What we do here now is going to be tested, and it's going to be tried for all eternity. What we do now on earth is going to be tested by God and say, "Was it worth it? Did it meet the mark?" Did it hit the standard for God's glory? The third point. By the law that gives freedom. We read earlier on, didn't we, in the series from James 1.25. But whoever looks intently into the perfect law that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, the key, doing it, hearing and doing. They will be blessed in what they do. When we hear the word of the Lord, when we hear God's law, when we hear his word and it lights up our lives and it encourages us and it builds us up and it challenges us. Do you know Hebrews ten sixteen says, This is the covenant I will make with them. After this time, says the Lord, I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their minds. So the writer of Hebrews is quoting Jeremiah 31, 33. This is the covenant I will make with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my law in their minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. Do you know there are over 600 laws in the Old Testament that God gave to the children of Israel? And we read the scripture last week saying that if you break one law you've broken all the laws and it's not within our nature that we have to work our way to trying to make sure that we can make all the laws possible because we can't be saved by our own works we're saved through faith alone but the laws that God has given us so he writes them on our heart the Holy Spirit empowers us to then live out those laws. It's not the case of, oh, we're going to do it our way and in our strength and it's going to be a badge of honour for me. It's not about that. Do you know Ezekiel 36, 26 to 27, this scripture God has blessed me with um, recently and just encouraged me, says these words, I will give you a new heart and put my spirit in you. I will remove from your heart, I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. God was saying through the prophet Ezekiel that he's going to put his spirit within us and write those laws in our heart and help us by his spirit fulfill the laws that he wants us to do. Isn't that incredible? That it's not down in one sense to our own 
strength and our own ability. There are times of obedience where we have to make a stand. There are times where we have to make the right choices. There are times when we will have to give an account for what we do. But we're not on our own. The Holy Spirit is with us and in us and moving in our lives to put God's law in our hearts that we can start living it out for his glory. That our actions and our words are a reflection of the time that we've spent with our Saviour. The time we've spent in his word, the time that we've been worshipping him. So I, before lockdown I preached a sermon that we are the temple of God. That we now carry the presence of God wherever we go. The Holy Spirit. We are carriers of him. We are carriers of his glory. I'm going to go on to talk about a little bit later. Let's start living like it, church. Let's start being the people that God's called us to be. Verse 13. Because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. Matthew 18, 33 to 35, Jesus was telling a fantastic parable and it says this, Then the master called the servant in, you wicked servant, he said, I cancelled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, the master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or your sister from your heart. Be merciful. Show mercy. Act righteously. Show mercy to those. Powerful words by Jesus. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. just want to take a minute just to pause and pray that whoever God has brought to your mind right now, those people you need to forgive, it's not just forgiving them from your mind and, and thinking, oh yeah, I need to forgive them. Jesus says, forgive your brother and sister from your heart. It's, a, it's an attitude. It's a desire to forgive. And that's hard because... In all of us, there's that, that fight, that battle going on between doing what God wants us to do and doing what we want to do. Jesus says, forgive from your heart. I just want to encourage you. You're not on your own. We've just read the scripture from Ezekiel where God says, I'll put in you a heart of flesh. Take out the heart of stone and put my spirit within you to fulfill my decrees and to follow my laws. You're not on your own in this, but you need to give it to God. You need to ask the Holy Spirit to come and help you forgive. Bible says that unless we forgive, we won't be forgiven. Luke 6, 37. Do not judge and you will not be judged. Do not condemn and you will not be condemned. Forgive and you will be forgiven. Can I encourage you? As we are coming to wrap up this no favourites, show mercy section of James. That we don't have favourites. We don't struggle with showing mercy. That we open up our lives to God and say, Lord, I need you to come into my life. I need you to help me in these areas where I'm struggling. Areas of unforgiveness. Areas of me trying to do it my own way. Areas of disobedience. Areas of where I'm doing it what doing the things that I want to do, Lord, help me by your Spirit. Prayers that seem so simple, but yet prayers that are so powerful, because if you mean them, God takes you at your word, and will start doing a work in you. We need to show mercy, just as we, just as we have been shown mercy. Do you know, mercy's definition is this, compassion or forgiveness shown towards someone whom is within one's power to punish or harm. Mercy shown to us by God. Jesus shows God's mercy by dying the death we deserved and giving his compassion and forgive, giving us his compassion and forgiveness. 
Romans 9, 15 to 18. For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy. I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. It does not therefore depend on human desire or effort, but on God's mercy. For scripture says to Pharaoh, I raised you up for this very purpose, that I might display my power in you and that my, that my name might be proclaimed in all the earth. Therefore God has mercy on whom he wants to have mercy and hardens whom he wants to harden. God has called us, me and you, to be his vessels of mercy. What are you a vessel of? Are you a vessel of mercy or a vessel of judgment? Are you a vessel that distributes God's nature and character? Or do you leave a bitter taste in people's mouth when you've been with them? Are you harsh with people? Are you quick to judge? Are you quick to make decisions about people? We read in James 1 at the beginning, be slow to speak, slow to anger, be quick to listen. Romans 9 23 to 24, the Apostle Paul says this, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had prepared before his glory, beforehand for his glory, apologies, even us whom he called, not of the Jews only, but also the Gentiles. We are to carry his glory as vessels of mercy. You and I are called by his name, are called to be vessels of mercy. Let's live up to that name, shall we? Vessels of mercy. I just want to share a quick testimony with you. And um, after I share this, there's going to be a short little video that's going to be clipped in to show you what we're doing as a church currently at the moment. About two years ago, I was in a prayer meeting in the room next to me. And it was a cold night. It was probably um, November. Um, time and I was sat um, on top of the radiator keeping warm and I felt God say to me in the middle of this prayer meeting are you who you say you are and I was like Lord what do you mean by that I've learned quickly and when God gives you a question you either need to give him the honest answer back either yes or no or always go back with a question because he'll always expand and always explain and I said Lord what do you mean by that and he explained and expanded what he meant. He said, are you the storehouse? Are you meeting the needs practically, financially, emotionally, spiritually for the community, for your church and for the wider community? And the answer two years ago would have been no, we weren't. But I hope in this short video, you'll see what we're doing. It was part of the Dorchester Community Kitchen, what God is doing through us. We are living up to our name. We are the storehouse. I've got two sermons bubbling up in my spirit. Just say yes to God as of what we've done in the last five, six months by just saying yes to God. The doors that is opened, but also living up to your name. Like this, when Paul says we are to be vessels of mercy, carriers of God's glory, we need to live up to that name that has been placed upon us as disciples of God. I hope you enjoy this short little video. So church, I just wanted to quickly show you what is going on at the moment in the storehouse. Do you know um, when I felt God give me that word in the prayer meeting um, a couple of years ago, are you who you say you are, are you the storehouse? But if you look at the church right now, we could really um, fit that description. We are a storehouse, we're providing a need um, for food for those who need it. There is um, a whole load of casseroles there. Um, the Waterpress Company um, have donated a fridge and are restocking it every day for us. We have one, two, three, four, five fridge freezers in place. This is where we have some of the food, some of the stock, some of the bags. All of these get decanted into smaller portions. Here we have the workstations. You can see the lines on the floor keeping people two metres apart. Um, the stuff is decanted into containers that are sent out. So we have lots going on. 
all have us. And I just want to thank God for what he's doing, how he's provided um, some of the stuff that goes in the basic box. Tea, coffee, sugar, squash, eggs, pasta, rice, cereal, pudding, crisp, bread, toilet roll, jams, um, size of boxes for small, medium, large, depending on how many people in the family, a veggie bag. Let's be vessels of mercy, because as the Bible says in James 2.13, because judgment without mercy will be shown to anyone who has not been merciful. Mercy triumphs over judgment. We must be merciful, or we will face judgment without mercy. But praise God, the end of the verse, James tells us that mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy wins. No favourites, just show mercy. Part 1 to 3, we looked at James tackling favouritism and discrimination against others. James tackles the issues around money and rich and poor and how we class different people. 
how we fall into the trap of judging others by their wealth or prestige as opposed to their character and their actions. This section of James, my study, and I have I called No Favoritism, Just Show Mercy. Let's remember that mercy triumphs over judgment. Mercy wins. Let's show mercy. As I come to a close, I was drawn again by the lyrics of a song called Mercy. We sang it as part of our worship watch party this morning. It was the last song in, in the list that we sang. And it's a song called Mercy by Matt Redman, who is an incredible worship leader. And I just want to read some of the lyrics just to focus our minds on what God is trying to say. And these words are an expression of that. It's just incredible. I will kneel in the dust at the foot of the cross where mercy paid for me, where the wrath I deserved. It is gone. It has passed. Your blood has hidden me. Mercy, mercy, as endless as the sea. I'll sing your hallelujah for all eternity. We will lift up the cup and the bread we will break. Remembering your love, we were fallen from grace. But you took on our shame and nailed it to a cross. Mercy, mercy, as endless as the sea. I'll sing your hallelujah for all eternity. May I never lose the wonder, oh the wonder of your mercy. May I sing your hallelujah, hallelujah, amen. Do you know my prayer for you today is this, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Saviour, today is the day that you can be in awestruck wonder of the Saviour and his mercy. I love the words in, in that bridge of that, of that song, may I never lose the wonder, oh the wonder of your mercy. Let us never forget that church, the wonder of God's mercy. I want to invite you to accept Jesus as Lord and Saviour. If what I've said to you has resonated, if what I've said to you has challenged you, I wanted to share the gospel in four simple steps. The Bible says that God loves us. The overarching theme of the Bible is that God is love and God is madly in love with you. But unfortunately, sin has come into our lives. Sin has come into the world and the Bible says we're born into sin. And the Bible says that sin separates us from God. But God made a way, he sent his son. He says in the, in, in his, in the word, he says that God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus died upon a cross for me and you. He hung naked, he took our shame and nailed it to the cross. But he didn't stay on the cross, he was put into a tomb and three days later he rose again victorious and has victory over sin and death and hell. And he wants to open that invitation for you to come in and have a relationship with the Father. And the fourth point is you need to decide what are you going to do. Today is a day of salvation the Bible says. So I want you to pray this prayer after me. If you pray this prayer, please contact me at prayer.thestorehouse at gmail.com. I'd love to help you and give you a Bible and help you on your journey and your walk with him. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you've sent your son to die in my place. I thank you that you came, Lord Jesus, to take my sin and my shame. I repent of my sin and I ask for your forgiveness. Wash me in your blood. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness and put your spirit within me to help me fulfill the laws that you've called me to live all the days of my life. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I want to pray for those struggling with who have listened today to show mercy or finding it hard to forgive. Lord, I pray that you would help those Lord, as we come before you and, and lay our hearts and our lives before you refresh. Lord, in areas where we have judged, where we need to show mercy, Lord, forgive us. Lord, help us to live for you. Lord, help us to forgive and be vessels of mercy, Lord, as we are your carriers of glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning, church. I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank you for your continued giving during the COVID crisis 
just want to pray God's blessing upon you and ask that you would prayerfully consider um, giving um, to a special project that we have going at the moment. Um, during this opportunity of crisis and lockdown, some of the volunteers, uh, as you can see, have decorated my new office. Um, in doing so, we've realised that there's some problems with the electrics um, and we've had an electrician come out to give us a quote just to put some things right. Um, so I'm just asking that you would prayerfully consider just putting um, some money um, into a fund just to help get some of the work done. Um, you're not going to recognise the place when we get back. Um, the way that we're planning to um, decorate and um, redecorate and, and get the church looking a lot better. Um, but we just found that there's, um, there's something that just needs doing um, with the electrics. I want to be open and transparent. We didn't plan to do this. Um, they redecorated my office and they looked at the lighting um, and there's some issues with that. Um, and so I need to be safe in my office. Um, so if you could please just prayerfully consider um, giving. Um, we stopped having almost like a building fund, um, but I think it's time that we need to um, to pay back into the, something like that, um, just so we look after and maintain the building well. So if you could prayerfully consider giving um, something towards that, we'd much appreciate it. Um, obviously we've got lots of stuff going on with the roof being repaired and the windows coming um, to be fitted later on today. Um, so all of this stuff is happening, but please prayerfully consider. I want to pray your blessing um, upon you as you have been faithfully given throughout this crisis. And we pray that God would continue to bless you in Jesus name. Amen.